All right, for those of you that need to breed brine shrimp, I'm going to show you a very quick and easy way how to hatch brine shrimp out. Now, brine shrimp is very, very important for fish fry. There are certain fish fry that need active swimming food in the water for them to feed on. If you try and feed with some type of flake or powdered food, they might not go for it. Some of the fry species require that movement to stimulate feeding. Now, I know that some of the smaller fish fry need even smaller fish food than brine shrimp to start with. But after a few days, feeding them brine shrimp is the best. Now, you can buy brine shrimp in two forms. You can buy the eggs only, which is that there. Now, you can buy them off the likes of eBay for roughly a fiver for 20 grams. Now, I know that sounds an awful lot of money, but that is 20 grams there. And if you feed your fish correctly, this will last you for months. You only need a very shallow teaspoon for every time you want to hatch the brine shrimp. Now, the other way of buying brine shrimp is in packets like this. It's ready mixed. Typically, a packet like this is enough for one 250 milliliter bottle. And you'll get at least three days use out of this. So this is sufficient for most fish fry just to get through the first few days. Now, even in a small packet like this, that will contain a level teaspoon of brine shrimp eggs, you will have at least 300,000 baby brine shrimp ready to hatch. A packet like this or brine shrimp eggs like this is more than enough to keep your fry going for the first few days for survival. So what's the advantage of buying pure brine shrimp eggs? Well, for a start, a 20 milligram bag like this will last you for months and months. So for initial payment of five pounds, you have an endless supply of eggs, but you need to make up your own salt mix and you need to buffer the water to make sure that the pH is high. Whereas with the ready prepared brown shrimp eggs, you just pour the contents into your bottle and off you go. The disadvantage is that a packet like this will set you back about 99p and you will at least get three days, if not more out of it. If you need more than three days, or you have loads and loads of fry, then I suggest you just buy the actual eggs themselves. Right, so what do you need to hatch your brine shrimps? Well, you actually need not a lot. All you need is a plastic bottle, a Coke bottle or any fizzy pop bottle like this. Now, the size of bottle that you want to use depends on how many brine shrimp eggs you want to hatch. Now, a bottle like this, once it's been prepared, you can literally add about 250 milliliters of water which is enough for a teaspoon or a packet of brown shrimp eggs. Now, if you're only hatching one set of fry, you only need one bottle. But if you're hatching lots of fry and you think you're gonna have fry for the next week or so, or at least I suggest having two of these bottles and rotate them. So what you'll do is you'll have a bottle like this, you'll let it run for three days. But before the three days are up, you'll start your second bottle about halfway through. Once you've collected all the shrimp from the first bottle, by the time you've got the first bottle set up again, you'll have your second batch ready from your second bottle, so you'll have a continuous supply. The other thing is, of course, if you're breeding fry on mass, then I suggest you get the larger plastic bottles that will hold a half a liter or a liter of water at a time. You do not just hatch your brown shrimp eggs straight up in a bottle like this. Ideally, what you want to do is have the bottle sitting upside down so that you can put your airline right down to the bottom. And the reason for that is, is that you want your brine shrimp eggs rotating all the time. You do not want any stagnant spots within the bottle. Now, if you use the flat end like that and you put your ass down at the bottom, you're gonna have dead spots and the eggs and the brine shrimp are just gonna sit there and they'll die. The other thing is you want a bottle with smooth surfaces. You do not want a bottle that's got ridges like some of the Coke bottles, because what will happen is a lot of the eggs will stick to the, the, the side of the plastic and the current won't be even. So you just take your bottle like that and you cut it in half. Now the other thing is remember to keep the lid. You don't want to keep the lid because that's going to be the bottom of the, the bottle. Now I've seen some fancy designs on YouTube where they've got drains on the bottom, little taps and all sorts so that they can just drain off the brine shrimp easily. Now. If you're just breeding your fish for fun and you don't have that many, don't bother. This is the quickest and easiest way. You don't need any 
elaborate setups. So you, cu you cut this bottle roughly in half. So now you've got your two ends, put your cap back on. And you'll say, well, what's the purpose of cutting the bottle in half? Well, it's simple, you use this as the base. Just slide that in there, so now you can stand it on any surface and it won't fall over. Another thing is, remember, take the paper off. Now, this bottle is green, and I use this quite successfully. Ideally, you want a clear plastic bottle. So what's the reason for that? Why do you want it all clear? Well, to enable to hatch the brine shrimps, you need to put this under a strong light. You need the strong light and heat to be able to hatch the brine shrimp. If you kept these in the dark and in the cold, I'm sorry, they're just not going to hatch. So you take your little container like that and you fill it, in this case, 250 milliliters of dechlorinated tap water. Perfect. That's all you need for your first batch of eggs. So the other thing you're going to need is an air pump. You need to run the airline down to the bottom of the actual container because as I've said before, you don't want any dead spots. So you just run right to the bottom like that. And the way to keep it in place is just with a good old peg, clothes peg. And that will keep your airline in place. Now, depending on what kind of brine shrimp eggs you bought, if you've actually bought the pure brine shrimp eggs, then you're gonna have to make up your own salt mix. Ideally, you want a salinity of one 0.025 now that is very very salty if you don't have a salinity meter for 250 milliliters of water like this you need an average of two to two and a half teaspoons of salt now the salt that you're going to add is very important if you can get hold of marine sea salt that they use for marine fish perfect uh, only difference is that small boxes of marine salt is quite expensive now remember you also need to add a ph buffer now you can use bicarbonate of soda a tiny pinch and that will harden the water several things are important if you're just buying the eggs straight up you need to make up your own salt mix with a good quality salt at 1.025 salinity and you need to add a pinch of bicarbonate soda to bring up the ph now it's for this very reason that a lot of beginner brine shrimp breeders We'll buy these packets because the mix is already made up for you, ready to go. You don't have to think about it. So once you've poured in an entire packet like this into your container or a teaspoon of pure brown chip eggs, you need to place this under a bright light and keep them warm. The ideal temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Now, if you place this next to a bright light, you will have no problem. Eggs will hatch. So now it takes approximately 24 hours for your eggs to start hatching. Now ideally, you want to leave them for 30 hours because that's when the bulk of the eggs will be hatched. So to collect your little brine shrimp, all you do is switch off your air pump, remove the airline, and just leave this little bottle sitting for about 15 minutes. What will happen is the little brine shrimp will start sinking to the bottom and you'll be able to use a pipette and just siphon them off. Now, if they don't sink to the bottom for any peculiar reason, then if you keep your little light shined up against the, the bottle, the shrimps are attracted to the light and they will all congregate up next to the side of the bottle where the light is shining. And once again, you just use a little pipette and you can siphon them off. Now, depending on what kind of fish you're feeding, it is important to note that you're using salty water here. Now, if you squirt this direct into your fry tank, there's a very good chance that you will kill your fry. Now, with the likes of guppies, killifish, and some of the other species, that's not a problem. The salt will not harm them at all. However, with many fry, do not put the salt water into the fry container because you will end up with dead fry. So what to do is, once you've taken the brine shrimp out with the pipette, squirt it into a very fine mesh net. Or well, the other thing you can use is the paper coffee filters and you squirt it into there and let the water drain off and that way you can just dip the brown shrimp into your fry container now as i've said before you'll get at least three days use out of your brown shrimp actually you will get a lot more um, you can continuously feed 
with this batch of brine shrimp eggs for at least seven days. And I know of many people that will use these babies and grow them on in separate jars until adulthood. The problem is when you're feeding your fish fry, they require high nutrient feed. For the first 24 hours of the brine shrimp's life, it is actually still carrying the yolk sac. It is that that will keep your fry in healthy condition. So after 24 hours, the brine shrimp start absorbing this little yolk sac. And what you'll be doing is just feeding your baby fish these brine shrimp without the yolk sac. Now there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I, I keep feeding my, my fry continuously with the, the brine shrimp until the brine shrimp is finished. But I keep supplementing with new batches of brine shrimp because obviously it's the high nutrient content of these yolk sacs that give your baby fry the boost they need. So once you've gone through your first container and you're ready to start using your second, do not throw away the water from this container. You can slowly pour off the water into a separate jar and as you pour it, the eggs will stick to the side of this jar and you will be able to continuously use this water for at least 30 days before you have to throw it away. So in that respect, as I've said before, if you're only gonna be hatching fry every now and again, then just buy the ready-made brown shrimp eggs and you'll have no wastage. Now I think to note with brown shrimp eggs, if you're not gonna use all your eggs in the first go, keep them in the fridge and keep them dark. If you keep them outside in the cupboard or something, your hatch rates will be lower. You need to keep your eggs nice and cool. Now there's various sources of brown shrimp eggs around the world. You'll get promises of 80% hatch rate, 90% hatch rate and 95% hatch rate. Be careful of buying cheap brown shrimp eggs from Asia. They typically have a hatch rate of 80%. In fairness, if you get 80% hatch rate from your brine shrimp, that's all you need. But I suspect you will get a lower hatch rate than that. And the problem is with many dead brine shrimp floating around in your little container, that will contaminate the water very quickly. So buy as high a quality of eggs as you can afford, which is 95% typically. And if you can, buy brine shrimp from the USA. I've tried batches from everywhere and the USA brine shrimp tends to be the best. Now I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of this video um, to my store where I do sell brine shrimp eggs and I'll also leave a link to my blog um, where you can read up on how to hatch other live foods for your baby fish and if you've got any questions fire away. Now there are a lot more complicated ways of doing this. Um, I've seen some really fancy setups and these guys are getting extremely high hatch rates and masses of volume. But for the sake of just breeding a few fish fry, this is the simplest method. And I apologize for the flicker of the video. That's because the fluorescent lights are at a different frequency, so it's interfering with the video quality.